Okay, well, Sully's on the couch and he's ready to go and I guess you're ready to go. And so what we're going to talk about today is the Pony Express. Now, I don't know about you, but when I was a little kid, I kind of thought that the Pony Express ran forever for years and years and years. And it did not. It actually only ran for a very short period of time. So we're going to talk a little bit about that and how it came to be founded and what it actually did. So let me share my screen here with my mad technical skills. And we're going to start from that slide right there. Okay, there we go. So, before about 1851, the way the mail traveled from the settled part of the United States, which was pretty much mostly on the eastern seaboard over there, the eastern part of the country, you know, everything was moving to the west with Manifest Destiny and all that, and California was out there, but it wasn't part of America yet. But as it was becoming more settled by Americans, people started wanting to be able to send mail out there. And originally, the way the mail had to travel was that it would leave a point here, say like New York City, and it would have to go by ship all the way down around the point of South America and back up generally to San Francisco. That was pretty much the biggest port at that point. And that was a journey of about 13,000 miles for your letter to go from New York to San Francisco. It took months for this to happen. Or at another point, you see this very skinny part right here, that's Panama. And they would stop and unload the mail and it would go across the, the continent there at Panama, which was a fairly small distance to another ship on the other side of Panama, get back on a ship and go back up that way. That was a journey of only 5,200 miles, but it also um, carried a lot of dangers in that uh, this was a jungly area. It was infested with mosquitoes that carried malaria, which was a very, still is a very deadly disease. Uh, I read somewhere that they think malaria has killed more people throughout history than any other disease in the history of the world because malaria is one of those diseases that you get it and it doesn't really go away. It just keeps coming back over and over again. And it's a very debilitating disease. Now, especially sending the mail all the way around South America was very expensive. And, you know, the United States was running the post office. At some point, they, they uh, peeled it off and it became a for-profit organization, but it was not originally intended to be a for-profit organization and it wasn't run that way at this point. The government paid for the uh, expenses of the post office and to send it by the mail by ship like that cost around seven hundred thousand dollars per year but all they were making in postage was about two hundred thousand so they were bleeding money over this proposition and everybody wanted a way to get the mail to california faster and cheaper so the first big uh, invention that happened was the stagecoach lines. A stagecoach, you've seen pictures of stagecoaches, they carried some passengers, but they were originally just mostly meant to carry the mail. And uh, the first stagecoach line began in 1851 by uh, two guys named Chopining and Woodward. They also had the Butterfield Stage Company and the Wells Fargo Stage Company. This generally took about 24 days. They had to build stations all across the, uh, the route that they used. Each of the different stage companies used a different route and they would have to build stations to be able to resupply the, the, the stage coaches. They would have new horse, if horses that had been rested. They would have food for the people that were riding on their, the, the stage coach. This was a satisfactory way to send the mail but often it was late because there was bad weather and a lot of times the stagecoaches were attacked by either native americans or people dressed up pretending to be native americans 
because you know it's easy to pretend to be a Native American because everybody expects that, right? So this led to the Central Overland California and Pikes Peak Express Company, which became known commonly as the Pony Express. This was going to be a route to run overland from St. Joseph, Minnesota to Sacramento, California, which was about 1,890 miles. And then it, the ships would go, or the mail would go on from San Francisco, from Sacramento to San Francisco by steamship. It was guaranteed delivery in 10 days. So this was a huge improvement, but it was very expensive. Each ounce of mail cost $33.32 and 32 cents in today's money it cost a dollar in their money but that's like each ounce so if you sent a package that was five ounces you'd have to multiply 33 dollars and 32 cents by five and it would be really expensive so you know most people didn't have this kind of money but this was a huge huge game changer 10-day delivery they had to build stations whoops They had to build stations. They ended up building about 190 stations in Nebraska, Wyoming, Utah, and Nevada. They had two different types of stations. The first was a relay station, and that just had a place for fresh horses. The rider would change horses and go on. They wouldn't really stop and eat or stop and rest there. They would have um, pick up the new horse and maybe pick up some some food that they could eat quickly while they were riding usually dried meat uh, cornbread dried fruit pickles and maybe a, a glass a cup of coffee to drink while, real fast while they're putting the saddle on the new horse but usually they already had them saddled and they just changed really fast the home stations were bigger and the, the relay posts i'm sorry were very simple they were small cabins they usually just had a dirt floor they had no glass windows they were not something noted for their luxury they were very just workmanlike survival type situations the home stations were bigger and they actually had sleeping quarters for the waiting riders because the riders would go so many miles and then change right and you know a new rider would take over and so the the other rider would wait there until the run came back and he picked it up and went on back to where he could come from in the originally the food was less simple there and it could be eaten at a much more leisurely pace they had specialized horses also. They tried to get crossbred horses, which were half Mustang and half of the larger American horses, so that they were fast, but they were also strong and maybe more intelligent. There's some debate about that. They fed them on the best grain that was available, which would hopefully make them where they were able to outrun and outdistance most of the Native American horses, which were fed mostly on grass and were mostly the smaller Mustang horses. So they hoped that by having the crossbred horse, they would get the best of both. And by feeding it on really good food, they would have the stronger, more uh, successful type of horse. Riders changed horses every 10 to 15 miles because a horse can only gallop and these horses were run flat out as fast as they could go for the whole time that the rider was on them for about 10 to 12 miles. Horse traffic is, is slow when you're riding them. Uh, they are very, fairly delicate animals. They can only run really fast for a very short period of time. So that's why they'd have to have the station so close together and change horses so quickly. The riders, they generally wanted young men under 18 or 18 years old and younger who were small expert riders. They wanted smaller people because that way the horse had to carry less weight. And that was good for the fact that they would be carrying the mail also. They would be paid one between $100 and $150 per month, depending on the route that they rode. 
They were required to take a pledge not to swear or drink alcohol or fight and be honest and loyal. If they violated this oath, they could be fired and lose their back pay. They carried a 20 pound pouch that the male was in, which was called a mochila. And they rode between 75 and 100 miles per day. The first run of the Pony Express began on April the 3rd of 1860 in St. Joseph, Minnesota. They carried, it carried a letter from Pe President Buchanan to the California governor, John Downey, kind of congratulating them on the fact that, you know, yay, now we've got this great service. Yay, the mail's only gonna take 10 days, yay. Kind of that kind of a letter. It actually arrived in Sacramento at 5.45 p.m. on April the 13th having been carried by 40 riders. So they did make it in their 10 days, the very first run. The uh, Pony Express produced a couple of very famous men who were riders for them. The most famous was William Cody. He's also known as Buffalo Bill Cody. He made a 22 hour ride in Wyoming from Red Butte Station to Pacific Spring Station and back for a total of 300 miles. That was a continuous ride. He's also credited with many daring escapes and adventures. And in his later life, he became a famous showman. He took a Wild West show, which was kind of like a circus around to uh, all of the different states. And he even went, into, went over to Europe he had uh, Native Americans who traveled with him, Sitting Bull, who was famous for the Custer's Last Stand, which we will talk about at some point, I am sure. Uh, he traveled with them. I think Geronimo at one point traveled with him. Annie Oakley, who was a famous female sharpshooter, traveled with them. He was a famous dude. He started out as a Pony Express rider when he was very young. Another one was called Pony Bob Haslam. He held the record for the longest and fastest run, which happened in May of 1860. It began at Lake Tahoe and he rode for 190 miles because some of the riders were either ill or they were very concerned. There was Native American activity in the area. There was a, a war between two tribes at that point and they were a little afraid to go into the area. So he just kept riding. He turned around and made the return journey for a completed journey of over 360 miles in a total of 40 hours. He was often, he was considered one of their most reliable guys. And so he was often chosen for particularly important news. He was the one who carried the dispatch talking about how Abraham Lincoln had been elected to the presidency in 1860. Jack Keatley was also known for his stamina. He rode 340 hours and 30, 340 miles in 31 hours without stopping to do more than change horses. He arrived at his final destination asleep in the saddle. The final days of the Pony Express were brought about by a kind of a combination of things. It, there was the completion of the Transcontinental Railroad in October of 1861. So that sort of started that was the major factor because now we can put the mail on a train and it'll go on across. We don't have to worry about having so many people, so many horses, we just put it on the train. Uh, there were financial losses to the company that ran the, the, the Pony Express. They lost more than $75,000 that winter because animals froze. It was a very particularly bad winter that year and animals froze or they were killed by Native Americans and they didn't really have the $75,000 to replace all of these animals. So they were struggling financially. Part of the reason was that the postage was very expensive and the service was mainly only used by businesses and newspapers. It never really caught on with the extended public because they just couldn't afford that much money to send a letter. A dollar doesn't sound like very much to us, but a dollar was big money in 1860. It's like $33 now, we said. The first transcontinental telegraph line was completed on October the 24th, 1861. And at that point, the Pony Express said, okay, that's it. We're kind of done now. So they stopped taking mail at that point, but they continued on into November of that year to finish delivering all of the mail that they already had accepted. So they delivered all of the mail they had, and then they just quit taking any new mail. 
its legacy is it only ran for 18 months. But in every Western movie you watch, you know, there's some, well, not every, but in lots of Western movies that you watch, there's references to the Pony Express. We've all heard about the Pony Express. It made 308 completed trips covering a distance of about 616,000 miles. That's equivalent to circling the entire earth more than 30 times. There was a lot of, those horses covered a lot of ground. They delivered 34,753 letters and they only lost one mail pouch in the entire 18 months. They were successful in keeping California and the other Western territories informed as the nation moved towards the Civil War when it was important that information got handled quickly, the Pony Express was able to do that very successfully, albeit just for a short period of time. Google Doodles, we all have seen the Google Doodles. We know that sometimes they put a special doodle up on a special day. On April the 13th, 2015, they put up a Pony Express doodle to celebrate the 155th anniversary of the first Pony Express delivery. Many of the stations from the uh, Pony Express still survive today, and they're listed as historical sites, and much of the trail can be traveled by car. It's all controlled by the National Park Service. We've talked about them before. There's some cool stuff that the National Park Service is in charge of, so you can travel and drive along in your car a large portion of the Pony Express trail. All right, I'm gonna stop my share. That's pretty much everything I have for you. I just thought it was pretty interesting. I hadn't, he I'd heard of Buffalo Bill Cody before. I hadn't heard of the other two gentlemen that were famous, but it's kind of a cool thing. If you enjoyed this, please let me know, give me a thumbs up. Uh, let me know that if you, what you liked, let me know what you'd like me to talk about. I guess that that's all I have for you. Thank you for watching. I'll see you the next time. All right, Sully, I guess we're done here.